Jeans is holding up the train. Oh, he's going to need some Waffle cereal. Go monster mad. Wow. Ah, breakfast cereals. When you think about it, they're some of the most magical foods in the world. No, really. Just what is it about breakfast cereals that just bewitch our minds? Especially when we were kids. Pretty much everyone at some point in their lives has been in a supermarket and stood for what felt like hours just staring at a mountain of brightly coloured boxes. Our minds just get baffled by all these different characters, colours, sights, shapes. They're like lies on a box. They promise us a delicious, exciting morning meal that will give us all the energy that we need for the whole day. Yet the reality is, they're made of wheat flakes and sometimes rice and will be amazingly hungry in about three hours time after eating them. And if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you had another problem, and that being that most cereals included an exciting toy, and sometimes we'd even buy a cereal we didn't like just to get our hands on those plastic pieces pieces of tut. Sometimes we'd go for months just to get the entire line of terrible toys. Today, most cereals don't have toys in the box, and promotional tie-ins with other companies are very rare aside from vouchers printed on the side of the box itself. But there was a time when cereals had major promotional campaigns, and even video game companies got in on the act. Some partnered with other cereals, and others actually made their own breakfast cereal. So let's go back to a time when all you needed to get through the day was some marshmallow shaped characters that vaguely resembled Pac-Man and other video game characters. Basically, a bowl full of sugar. Let's take a look at the history of video game breakfast cereals. Now, on your breakfast table, Donkey Kong brand cereal. Crunchy bears of corn, cold breakfast. Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong cereal. Sweet. Donkey Kong cereal is one of the earliest video game cereals to get released. It was launched by Ralston and hit the US shelves in 1982 and lasted until 1984. The cereal was promoted as crunchy barrels of fun for breakfast, and the cereal pieces were shaped like barrels from the original Donkey Kong game. In the commercial for the cereal, some dude with a deep voice told you that the crunchy taste will drive you ape. The sweet, crunchy corn taste will drive you ape. You Two commercials were made advertising the cereal, each with some fun animations of Donkey Kong, Mario and Pauline as the kids ate the cereal with huge emphasis placed on the crunch that you heard when you ate the cereal. From all accounts, this was actually pretty similar to Captain Crunch, both in taste and the sound you heard when you ate a bowl of the stuff. Donkey Kong cereal is part of this complete breakfast. So shortly after Donkey Kong the game came out, there was a spin-off title called Donkey Kong Jr. So of course it makes sense that the Donkey Kong cereal also got a spin-off. <laughs> Made by Ralston, it was launched in 1983 and was made of coloured fruit corn puff pieces. Oh yeah, that sounds delightful. It was barely related to the game. The pieces were just fruits such as bananas and berries. The commercial showed two kids who get transported to the jungle as Donkey Kong Jr. swings on by. But the best thing about this advert comes at the end when you see the full breakfast that the kids are eating. They have monkey shaped toast! Where do you get monkey shaped toast? I want all my toast to be monkey shaped. And also the one thing about this commercial that I don't really get is the fact the moment you take a bite of it, you're transported to the jungle. How is that possible? Morning kids, it's a Pac-Man day with my crispy corn cereal coming your way. With marshmallows. 
Ah, Pac-Man. One of the oldest video game characters also got his own brand of cereal. Launched in 1983 by General Mills, Pac-Man was a crunchy sweetened corn cereal with marshmallow bits. The pieces were described as corn puffs, and the marshmallows were shaped like Pac-Man and the various ghosts that were featured in the game. The cereal changed its box design a year later, and even introduced Mrs. Pac-Man. Marshmallows with a shocking pink bow, and Super Pac-Man Marshmallows, which were just larger versions of the existing ones. The cereal was apparently incredibly sugary, but it mostly resembled Kix in both look and taste. To promote the cereal, there were several commercials made, and most were fully animated, and they were pretty okay for the most part. Except for the Super Pac-Man advert, which had some really creepy looking imagery. However, they did also do some live action adverts, which mainly involved a lot of dancing. Just look at them, look at them go, they just they just won't stop dancing. That's what happens when you eat this cereal, you just never stop dancing. Ever. People who ate it in the 80s are still dancing to this day. Anyone who ate the cereal was known as a ghost chopper. Because of course they were. A fun little thing I found was in this episode of Mr. Rogers' Neighbourhood. He actually walks down the cereal aisle and you can clearly see the Pac-Man and even the Donkey Kong cereal for sale on the shelf. They're both very similar in terms of design on the shelf, despite being made by rival companies. So now I'm going to talk about what's probably the most famous video game breakfast cereal to have ever been made. The Nintendo Cereal System. Nintendo. Wow! Why name your cereal after just a game when you can name it after the entire console? The Nintendo Cereal System, yeah I can't believe that's its actual name, landed in 1988 from Ralston and it actually contained two separate cereals based on Mario and Zelda. The cereals were coloured crunchy shapes which barely look anything like the characters and objects that they were claiming to be. Honestly, I have to say that both cereals look quite disgusting. And I love how they give the impression that it's a healthy product by stating how one is fruity and the other is berry flavoured. Yeah, it's healthy. Fruit and berry flavoured. The cereal was promoted by an odd advert that had a really annoying jingle which just sticks in your head after you listen to it for a short time. Like right now. It's for breakfast now! Nintendo! It's the cereal! Wow! Nintendo! Nintendo cereal system, because Mario tastes like fruit. So the next few cereals that I'm going to talk about aren't actually based on a video game character, but they were already established cereal brands which had quite the major promotional tie-ins with other video game characters. And we start with Sonic the Hedgehog. Sonic had quite a few serial tie-ins during the 90s, but unlike Nintendo's characters, he wouldn't get his own serial until many years later. We start with the very first Sonic serial tie-in, which was Cookie Crisp in 1993. The serials would carry one of two plastic Sonic figures, which are now quite highly sought after. A few years later, Cookie Crisp would also do another tie-in, in which they would offer Sonic Pogs with each box. There was a commercial for the Pogs promotion, but there's really not much to it. So let's move on to the next one. Now you can take Sonic round the world, or walk the dog with this Sonic Spinner only from Kellogg's Frosties. Another very big Sonic cereal promotion was Kellogg's Frosties in 1993. The cereal offered a mail-in campaign in which people who purchased the cereal could get Sonic-themed yo-yos. As well as yo-yos, it seems that pin badges were also part of the promotion, and special boxes were made in which Sonic joined Tony the Tiger on the cover of Kellogg's Frosties. But one of the best things about this promotion was the commercial that they ran to help advertise it. It was fantastic, and I can't believe I missed this during my Sonic Animation History video. The advert shows a great Sonic animation playing on the Mega Drive, and Tony the Tiger playing with the Sonic yo-yos. Although you know how when another company sometimes gets Sonic, they get details about his design wrong, like they'll colour his arms the wrong colour? Well, Kellogg's took it a step further. Whilst they got the arm colour right, check out the legs! And legs!
Another big promotion that was held in 1994 by General Mills saw Sonic partnered with Buzz the Bee. The promotion saw boxes of Honey Nut Cheerios branded with Sonic and featuring competitions to win Sega consoles and exciting Sega games. To help promote this partnership, an animated commercial was made that saw Buzz the Bee challenging Sonic to a race. And what did the winner get? Were they crowned with glory? Surrounded by riches? No! They won a box of Honey Nut Cheerios. Wow. Sadly, the promotion didn't have any toys in the box, but they did print cheats and tips for various Sega games instead. So at least you had something to read whilst you ate your breakfast. Hey Sonic, how can I get as good as you? So I knew there would come a time where I would have to talk about this in some degree on this channel. Ladies and gentlemen, Pokemon. Pokemon has had loads of tie-ins and promotions, but this one is the most significant of the tie-ins. In the year 2000, Kellogg's actually launched a Pokemon branded cereal, described as an oat cereal with marshmallow pieces that was shaped on popular Pokemon, which again, don't look anything like the Pokemon they're supposed to be. There was a commercial made to help promote it, but something about it just really triggers my flight or fight reflex. Something about it is just really creepy and, and I can't really explain why why or what it is. I know they try and make Mum's cooked Pikachu face terrifying, but something about the whole setup just really rubs me the wrong way. I really don't like it. Anyway, moving on. So there's another Pokemon serial tie-in that I want to mention because it's actually going on at the time of making this video. General Mills Cereals has started a Pokemon card collecting promotion. It seems that several boxes actually contain various Pokemon cards. I'm not sure if they're unique ones or ones that you can just find in standard retail packs. But hey, a modern cereal that actually has something in the box. Hey kids, do you have dreams of being a rock star? But you don't have any musical talent whatsoever? Yay! Well, maybe you should buy Guitar Hero! Yeah, how many of you remember Guitar Hero? Guitar Hero was huge during the mid-2000s. People were actually quitting jobs and even quitting college to become professional Guitar Hero players. I wonder how they're doing. So this is going to be the first of a couple of games which had a serial tie-in promotion, and these games all follow a certain trend. They were basically huge at the time, they crossed over into mainstream popular culture, and you couldn't move for them. They were everywhere, and they're one of those things which just seem, this is just too big to never be unpopular again. And then suddenly, you just don't even realise it's vanished, completely gone. There's no trace of them anywhere anymore. So at the height of its popularity, between 2007 and 2008, Kellogg's ran a serial promotion tie-in. Each box of their products contained one of four mini Guitar Hero electronic toys. And you could also send off for a t-shirt as well. The promotion was kind of like the game itself. A big thing that once existed. So this next serial is a really cool product. In 2017, Nintendo and Kellogg's partnered up to bring out a limited edition Super Mario cereal. Originally made to help promote Super Mario Odyssey, the cereal was a mixed berry flavour, which contain- Wait a minute, berry flavour? Just like the original Mario cereal. Well, it was fruity flavour, but the Zelda one was berry flavour. Oh my god! Maybe Nintendo actually have a mandate that Mario tastes of fruit and berries. This is now canon. Mario is fruit flavored. All right, enough creepy Mario lore, back to the cereal. The cereal also contained marshmallow pieces based off various power-ups in the game. And unlike pretty much all the other marshmallow pieces that we've seen so far, these look really good. But the cereal box itself had a really cool party trick. Each box was an amiibo. You could scan it whilst playing Super Mario Odyssey and you'd be rewarded with a few coins. Unfortunately, the cereal did change its package design a few months later and this newer version actually dropped the amiibo support. But the cereal itself was unchanged, so if you had to have your fruity Mario flavoured cereal in the morning, you still had a chance to get some. 
So when I was talking about the Guitar Hero serial, I mentioned how it was one of those IPs that seemed so big it was never going away. Well, this is another one of those. Remember Neopets? They were huge during the early 2000s. Loads of people were into them, and they actually had their own brand of cereal. Neopets Island Berry Crunch. It was launched in 2006 by General Mills, and the cereal was a sweetened berry flavour. The cereal pieces looked like purple, and deep red Trix Puffs. I'm not sure how long this serial lasted, but they did offer some collectible cards if you were one of the few people that actually bought this. So here we go with another game that was absolutely huge, amazingly popular, and it was everywhere at one point, and now it just doesn't seem to exist. Remember Angry Birds? Well, they also got a serial partnership at some point during the mid-2000s with Cookie Crisp. What is it with Cookie Crisp and video games? They seem to be the go-to serial for partnerships. Well, anyway... They had a tie-in promotion in which you could get some pretty bad original Angry Birds PC games for free. And Angry Birds does in fact have its own serial today, but it seems to be mainly focused on the movie version of the franchise and not the game, so I don't really want to talk about it. So the next tie-in that I want to talk about is for a game series which, like Angry Birds and Guitar Hero, were huge and they were everywhere and everybody jumped on it and then all of a sudden it just vanished into nothing. Remember? Skylanders? Skylanders was the Toys to Life series which just seemed unstoppable at one point. It wasn't that long ago that there were tons of games and supporting merchandise. Now it's barely a memory. At the height of its popularity, General Mills held a promotion tie-in with several of their products across several different Skylanders games. Often they would include special Skylanders cards and they would also give customers the chance to buy special figures for the game. But nothing else that noteworthy, it was just another company jumping on the popularity hype wagon. So I've already mentioned that Sonic had some various partnerships with serial companies back in the early 90s, but fans would have to wait until the mid-2010s before they actually got a Sonic-branded serial. And even then, it was only available in one place on Earth, Saudi Arabia. The company Sweet Tune made tons of Sonic-branded food items, including two different cereals. The first was basically a frosted cornflake cereal. I think Kellogg's cornflake, something along those lines. But the second was a chocolate-based cereal. I don't think you can buy these cereals anymore. I'm pretty sure they stopped production of them a couple of years ago. But we might return to Sweet Tune one day because they had a huge range of Sonic food products, and some of them are actually pretty good from all accounts. So you know how I've talked about games like Angry Birds and Guitar Hero, which were so big and everywhere, you'd think, wow, this is never going to die out, and then all of a sudden it just vanishes? I have a feeling that this next video game is going to be one of those. Let's talk about Overwatch. In late 2008, Overwatch the Serial was announced. In a partnership between Blizzard and Kellogg's, Lucio's entered the serial market, and... Oh, they look absolutely disgusting. They're a vanilla and green flavoured corn pieces. And each cereal box is effectively a loot box that you can redeem in the game. Lucio's, the Overwatch cereal. Buy it now, before the series goes the way of Guitar Hero and Angry Birds. So this next cereal is actually a promotional item which I really wish I owned, because it's so awesome! In 2017, Sega launched the Sega Forever service on mobile devices, and to help promote it, they created a few special boxes of Sega Forever Golden Ring cereal! They were given out to influencers and members of the press around 2017, and there's even a collectible toy! in the box! It's a free keyring that was actually available from Numskull, and it even contained actual cereal that you could eat. The cereal resembles, and according to accounts, even tastes like Cheerios. It's a brilliant promotional item, but due to it being limited to promotional items, they're now extremely rare collectibles, and I really want one. So this next item I very nearly didn't include in this video because it's not a serial tie-in or promotional campaign event, but it was clearly breakfast themed and it was marketed as something that you could have for breakfast. So let's talk about it. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the Sonic Toaster. Following a number of jokes and pranks said during the Sonic live streams, Sega crowdfunded and released a Sonic themed toaster in 2018. The toaster was initially limited in availability 
equality to just people living in North America. But a few weeks into the crowdfunding campaign, it became obvious that the toaster wouldn't make its target. And with increasing pressure from fans outside of North America, Sega allowed fans from most other territories worldwide to pre-order the toaster. The toaster itself burns an image of Sonic onto the toast, and it works absolutely fine in North America. However, in Europe, and especially the UK, where the voltage is a lot higher, the toaster is quite a fire hazard. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube from Sonic fans living in the UK who tried to use the toaster with a standard voltage adapter, and both the toaster and the adapter starts to smoke. Ooh. Oh yeah, it's smoking. <coughs> it's smoking, it's smoking, it's smoking, it's smoking. It. Um, my converter has smoke coming out of it. See that? I'm going to turn that off. Wow. Even I've not had any luck getting my toaster to work. I actually researched into how to get US electronics to work in the UK, and I purchased a proper step-down power converter, but every time I try to use it, the toaster demands so much voltage that the safety cuts off triggers, and it cuts all power to the units. So it's a fun little device, just a little unsafe to use outside of America. So the last actual breakfast cereal which I want to talk about is courtesy of Funko, and it's a really odd one. Basically in recent years, Funko have started to make a product line that resembles really old breakfast cereals. They've basically been creating specially themed Funko boxes which look like breakfast cereals, and each box contains the Funko Pop toy, but there's actual breakfast cereal inside that you can eat. The cereal is exactly the same across each version that they've released so far, just with different food colouring per franchise and they've done a bunch of video game tie-ins, including Cuphead, and Mega Man, and just last week they announced Sonic. They look really cool for a one-off collectible item, but it's not quite the same as going to the store and finding an actual box of cereal, but it's still fun. So the final item I want to talk about is a bit of a cheat, because it's not a real breakfast cereal, but a fictional mock-up product made by Sega, although I wouldn't be surprised if they did put it up for sale on one of their online stores at one point. To help launch Team Sonic Racing, Sega made a fun live-action trailer, which saw various people racing around a supermarket trying to buy the last box of Golden O's, a Sonic-themed breakfast cereal. It's quite an impressive-looking mock-up box, considering it's just an end gag for a trailer advert. Sadly, this is a completely fictional product, and it's not available in the shops, but I would hope that Sega do actually release it on their stores as a little fun thing. Maybe it could contain a t-shirt or something. So this brings an end to our trip through the history of video game related breakfast cereals and promotional tie-ins. I've definitely not covered everything, there's bound to be something I've missed or just completely forgotten about. So let me know down there in the comments if there's an obvious breakfast tie-in that I have missed or completely forgot. Any of you guys try out any of these epic video game cereals? At least the ones which were original and not just tie-ins? Please let me know in the comments what they were like. And do you actually still have any of these cereals mint in the box? So which cereals from the list have you not tried, but you would love to try if they ever got re-released again? Please let me know in the comments because I'm really interested to hear what you have to say on this one. See you next time! Sweet crunchy corn taste will drive you ape. If you enjoyed this tasty look at the sugary world of video game breakfast cereals, please hit that like button. And if you'd like to join me for more adventures, please click that subscribe and bell notification button. Also, consider following me on Twitter for more fun and future video updates. And a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, whose kindness helps keep this channel going. If you'd like to join them and help support the work I do, please click the links in the video description. But most of all, just thank you for taking the time out to watch this video and to enjoy the work I do. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you. It's smoke, it's smoke, it's smoke, it's smoke. Wow! Wow, 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 wow!